The wheel is back. We got all new suggestions today for the wheel. What's different about today is we have a lot of good ones and a lot of bad ones. So we could use this wheel to destroy Earth or save Earth, and we're gonna do it on a few different planets today. We're gonna start with Earth, as usual. So if you've never seen the wheel before, basically we spin it and whatever it lands on, we have to do to Earth. Moon collision, okay. So we're gonna take our poor Earth here and we're gonna throw the moon at it now. Get the moon, launch. Oh, I don't know what that was. The moon is on its way now to Earth. Let's check it out. Okay, it looks like it's gonna hit uh, Central America. Boom, okay, there's the collision. Oh, the shock wave covers the whole Earth. The entire Earth is orange. That moon, it must be going really fast. Okay, let's see if Earth can survive after all this. Yeah, it looks like it's mostly okay. Um, I think everything probably would have died, but I think life would redevelop. Okay, spin two, let's see what we're doing now. Light speed bowling ball, okay. This might destroy Earth. Let's see if this actually does more damage than the moon collision did. So we're gonna get a bowling ball, which is an object in universe sandbox in the human items, like human scale objects. And we're gonna launch this at the Earth. Okay, speed, one light speed. So it's one C. So it look, you can see the line of where it's gonna go. It's gonna go right there. So let's set our time to like 0 0.1 milliseconds every second. Okay, now we're going one millisecond every second. So this is like super slow motion. For scale, it takes the human brain about 10 milliseconds to process information. So if something happens, you won't even know what, like you won't even be able to know what happened for 10 milliseconds. So yeah, basically they would never see this coming. Boom. Okay, so it left a little collision, like a couple fragments came out. The time's still going so slow that we can't really see the true effects until we... Yeah, there we go. So you can start to see the shockwave after a few minutes. And that was it. I actually thought it would do more. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, desert world. So we're going to make Earth a desert world now. So by desert world, I sort of mean like Tatooine from Star Wars. I don't want to kill all of the, the life. I just want it to be more desert than it is. So we're going to start by removing all of the water. Actually, that already looks really deserty. And then add a tiny bit so we can start to see a little bit, maybe just like that. And then if we settle the water, let's see what happens. No, that's too much. It's like the, the planet just has a really thick thing on it now. We're just going to do no water. But there are still clouds, so I still think that there's a little bit of a water cycle going on. But it would be interesting to see what kind of stuff would happen here. So our average temperature is still super, super hot. I'm actually going to set it to 30 degrees as our average temperature. And you can see that brought back our plants. Um, and I think that looks good for the desert world. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Draw a smile. Okay, so we're actually gonna use the laser tool to draw a smile now on the earth Let's pick we'll pick uh, just like where the ocean was. Uh, let's go. Yeah So this is burning a laser into the earth draw a smile here I want it to be so strong that even after it cools down you can still see where it was We're gonna make it more so it's ten times as strong as it just barely was. Okay, that's gotta be still there. Oh, that is amazing. The planet. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm gonna speed up time and see if we can still see that smiley face after. <gasps> yes, that is beautiful. Oh, and the I guess the laser was so hot it burned up half of South America and half of North America. Um, oh, and Australia. Oh no. Ooh. -hoo -hoo. Terraform it. Okay, so we're basically gonna try to get Earth back to kind of how it was, but I don't think it'll ever really be the exact same. Okay, okay, so I kind of got the water back to how it was. I mean, it's kind of offset on each side, but I think that's what we're gonna have to deal with. Because if I, it's like, it's lopsided now from like all the collisions it's been through. But we do have some water on it now. Um, and it does still have an atmosphere. Average temperature, we'll set it to 15 Celsius. That should help a lot. Life likelihood is at a solid 90.2%. I would consider that re-terraformed, even though half of the planet is now covered in ice somehow. <laughs> Remove the atmosphere. Okay, so now we're gonna take Earth and we are just gonna go to, this, go to its atmosphere and just type zero. Oh boy, here we go. So the solar wind alone would end all life on Earth. Um, and we'll have no greenhouse effect, so the temperature will drop rapidly. You can see that here. Average temperature, everything will start to freeze. At least it should. Yeah, you could start to see some ice forming, but it doesn't seem to be cold enough to freeze everything yet. Life likelihood zero, yeah. So life cannot exist without an atmosphere, but that is Earth without an atmosphere. Oh, here we go, add big rings. Not just rings, big rings, okay. And there's, can you still see the smiley face? <gasps> yes, the smile is still there. 
Okay, we're adding big rings. Well, how big are big rings? Saturn rings? Or are those not big enough? We'll go bigger. Okay, these should be really big rings. Oh yeah, check that out. That is beautiful. Can you imagine if Earth actually had these rings? Okay, let's see how Earth handles having rings. It makes the game lag because there's so many tiny particles now that the game has to simulate, but it seems like it's okay. Ooh. Oh, oh, which one? Moon Swarm, not Global Warming. I thought it was gonna be on Global Warming. Okay, so Moon Swarm. This might actually be really interesting to see with um, with the rings because the moon swarm is basically it just puts a ton of moons around the earth that will start to collide with each other and the earth um, and so there you go you can see that and it does very much disrupt the rings it almost launches earth out of the rings and they're all funneling down to try to get in there the physics simulation and the gravity simulation is really cool earth is still technically here even though it's not it's not going to support any life in this state Whoa, that is cool to see it all swarming around like that. Check that out. I can't even run it any faster because of how many particles are trying to be simulated. So I'm actually gonna clear all the rings and then we can actually see what's gonna happen. So Earth looks like it's spinning super fast because you could see that water ring on it. Yeah, it's spinning very, very fast. This is only going at two hours per second. So let's see how long a day is on it. The rotational period is 0.1 days or 2.8 hours. So if you lived on this earth one day, 20, like our normal 24 hour day cycle would only last 2.8 hours, but there is still green on there. I'm actually surprised that there's still green. And it looks like we kept one of the moons in orbit. Add Earth's atmosphere. So I think we're gonna, we're gonna see if life can return now to our completely broken earth just by re-adding Earth's atmosphere to it. Okay, that is all we did. And it, whoa, somehow, that stum that seemed to stabilize the water in a way. Let's check our life like 55.4%. All right, so that is Earth versus the wheel. We're now gonna move on to Mars versus the wheel. Okay, here's Mars. So the Earth survived the wheel. Let's see if Mars can do the same. Let's see if we end up terraforming Mars and it's even better than when it started. <laughs> Mars collision. Okay, so we're gonna collide Mars with itself and we will see how this works and see what Mars looks like after this. Whoa, that was fast. Okay, that was it, that was the whole thing. Okay, speed up time. So it's almost spinning, um, oh, wait, how is there water? It's like the ice from both of the Marses combined and we got some water on it. That's cool, okay. So Mars is a new planet now, twice as massive, almost twice as massive. It looks almost uglier somehow, except we have that water, which is good. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Add another star. Okay, so this um, means we're gonna add another star to our solar system. So what I'm gonna do to not make every planet just die, we're gonna set the mass of the sun to 0.5. While it's paused, so the sun is only half as massive now. Then we're gonna add another sun, make it binary with our sun, and also set this sun to 0 0.5. Okay, let's see how that works. Uh-oh. <laughs> Are they orbiting each other? Yes. Do the planets stay in orbit? I think so. I think we did it. Okay, two half suns make a whole sun, but their light will be twice as strong, which could be good for Mars because Mars is further out. So if it gets more energy from the sun, that could help with life. Moon collision. Okay, so same with Earth. We're just gonna throw a moon at it. And maybe this will make things worse or maybe it won't do anything. Okay, so it is worse than it did on the Earth because Mars is smaller than the Earth. Even though we have two Mars combined technically. <gasps> Whoa, it almost added like a cratered effect. You can see how many little craters there are now on our Mars. That's kind of cool. Ooh, add rings. So not big rings, just little rings. We'll do a tiny little ring on it. Boom, look at that. Tiny rings super far out. That kind of looks cool. Ooh, this will be good. This will be really good. Add water. Okay, so I added a lot of water to it. So we kind of have this pole area and then we have this kind of continent. And then, I mean, I don't think the atmosphere of Mars is enough to really do much. So we're just gonna leave it like that. Okay, we're gonna give Mars three more spins and whatever it looks like after is our final Mars. Is it gonna get destroyed or no? Okay. Set distance to 1AU, this could help it. So 1AU is the same distance between Earth and the sun. So if we set this one's distance to 1AU, Okay, well it lost its rings. Its rings are just gonna be floating out here. <laughs> but now this is as close as the Earth is. You can see that their orbits now intertwine. This could help with life on it. Uh-oh, uh-oh. 
add 20 add <laughs> add 20 moons okay so that we're gonna do we're gonna have to do really small moons random asteroid almost that's what we'll have to do for this to even work one two three four five six seven eight eighteen nineteen twenty and if you check out our orbital view, check that out. Mars with 20 moons. These are its new rings. Oh my gosh. The orbits of the objects going past the binary stars, it's so bad. But if you turn on trails, you see that they are actually in orbit. It is so weird how binary systems work. Final spin for Mars. Oh, which one's it gonna be? Meteor shower. Okay, so we need like a bunch of asteroids that are gonna launch into it. So this is gonna be a little more than a meteor shower because there's not any atmosphere to stop it. So we're just gonna... Let's pause time and we're going to send a bunch of these into Mars and then we'll play time and watch them all come at the same time. Okay, there we go. So all of these that are in a circle right here are going to launch into Mars and we're going to watch them all collide at the same time. Here are some of them come. Oh, and boom. Okay, that was kind of cool. But there is our final Mars. Um, a lot of these are gonna stay in orbit, actually. Leave a comment down below which object you'd like to see versus the wheel next. I have a ton more suggestions on the wheel that we haven't even used and some more that I'm gonna add next time. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll see you guys next time.